Okay, so I'm going to go back through some of the recitation worksheets from chapter 20. So um, we did this already, so you might be comfortable with these answers, but it's been a while. I figured it'd be a good time for review. So as always, I'm going to tell you to pause when I think it's time for you to take a moment and step back and try to remember how to do this on your own. Um, as you know, from a whole year of doing physics, uh, often it's getting started that's the hardest part. So if you don't pause it and try to do the problem on your own first, then you're skipping over that really important step of problem solving. So I have a solenoid um, shown here, and we want to figure out how the current is. So let's look at A. What does it mean to leave on the left, um, enters on the left, and re leave on the right? So this is, um, if it enters on the left and it leaves on the right, that's what this looks like. So this is a coil of wire here where you can kind of see over here in the back, this coil of wire is coming out of the back. And this coil of wire here is coming up the front, okay? So entering on the left would mean that in the front of the loop, the coil of the current is going up, okay? And that's gonna be an important part of one complete energy, okay? So to solve this, we've been told what the B looks like. So the B field is that in the middle of the loop, the magnetic field points to the right, which must mean that in the outside of the loop, right, the real magnetic field lines kind of wrap around like this. So for any solenoid, the magnetic field is always the strongest in the middle of the solenoid where all of the magnetic field lines are closest together and it gets weaker outside of the map, outside of the loop. Um, so magnetic field is to the right in the middle of the loop. And so we're gonna try and get out our loops. Um, and for a test that you take, um, you'll always be allowed to have loops. So um, uh, get one out, pause it, find something, rolls of duct tape work well, um, like a wire that is sort of made to look like a circle works just fine. People sometimes just like cut a one inch strip of paper and tape it together. That can make a great loop, but find a loop. And let's do this. Okay, so this says that the magnetic field is to the right, and I want to use my right hand rule and put my thumb in such a way that I see the, um, that the magnetic field should be to the right, okay? So here I have what I drew, which would be uh, the magnetic field, the current is going up in the front of the loop, looping around and going down in the back of the loop. Um, And so uh, this isn't what we want, right? Um, if I follow what's going on with my right hand here, my fingers, I remember imagining with my fingers, I imagine how the things would go from my knuckle and out. So this is going to the left and then looping around and going to the right underneath it. But we want my fingers to be going not to the left, but to the right. Okay, so evidently I have this drawn, I have my thumb pointed in the wrong direction. So instead of going up in the front, I would like to be going down in the front. So I'm gonna put it like this. So now, whoop, that is the same thing, right? Up in the front, down in the back. So I need to flip my hand around so that it's going up in the back. So now it's going up in the back and you can see how my knuckles are in the back. They are pointing to um, the right as you want, and so they are moving to the right, just like that, which must mean that the current is going up in the back, looping around, and down in the front, and then back like this. So, what we decided was that current is not doing this, because the current is not going up in the front, but it is going down in the front. So current, it's going like that, down in the front. So all of these are currents going down in the front. This is maybe a little hard to see. So let me draw it like that. So the dashed parts here are the back and the solid parts here are the front. And so we decided that on the front, current was always going down. And in the back, the current was going up. So this looks like current coming in from the right and leaving on the left. So the correct answer to this is B.
Okay, um, another problem, I'm kind of skipping around where we were in that recitation worksheet. Um, but another problem here is one that we did in class, the direction of the magnetic field at point P in the center of the loop. Um, I tried to kind of get a collection of things that get us a lot of good practice using the right hand rules. It's been a while. Um, so when we did this in class, we imagined a straight, thinking about this as not being one single wire that is looped, but as two different wires. One that is a straight current carrying wire with a current to the right and one that is a circle of wire with current going around in it in a, counter, in a clockwise fashion like that. So let's think about this as two separate things. So I'll use pencil for my straight loop of wire. So this will be all in gray. Okay so we uh, um, want to think about which right hand rule do we use to figure out the direction of the magnetic field due to a current carrying wire. Uh, and we'd like to figure it out right here. So for this straight piece of wire, um, pause it if you haven't already, but for this straight piece of wire, we want to figure out what is the magnetic field due to a straight piece of wire. So in order to do that, we'll use the first right-hand rule where we put our thumb in the direction of the current. So I'll put my thumb in the direction of the current and my hands curl in the direction of the magnetic field. So what my hands were doing there is um, they were pointing out of the page, up above the wire, and then down, um, and then into the page, down below the wire. So the current is going up, down, in. So what that means here is that B of the wire is out of the page up here, right? Um, and we know that the magnetic field due to a current carrying wire will be the strongest close to the wire, so I'll put like a high density of dots here, and it gets weaker farther away from the wire, so it's going to kind of trail off in that way. Um, so it comes, we have dots over here because it's out of the page, and then X's down here everywhere because it's into the page. I'll try to make those dots taper off a little bit. Okay, so um, that is B of the wire. The straight current carrying wire has a magnetic field that looks like this, which means that at point P, which is the region where we're interested in, we have a little X. So the magnetic field is into the page at point P there. Um, now I'll use my blue pen to think about the magnetic field created by a current carrying wire where the current is going clockwise. Um, so I'll get my loop. Here's my loop. And I want to put my thumb in the direction of the current. So I'm going to put my thumb pointing up over here on the left-hand side. So my thumb is pointing up on the left-hand side, and the way that my fingers rotate is like this, okay? And so I see that my fingers are going straight down into the page in the middle of the loop. So this current carrying wire has a magnetic field that looks like this. Its X is inside the loop. And this magnetic field is always the strongest in the middle of the loop, so I'm going to draw a lot of X's in here. And actually, I should think about actually drawing the same number of X's inside as outside. So if I drew 10 X's on the inside of my loop, then I'm going to put 10 dots on the outside of my loop. All right, so I'm not sure how well the blue versus uh, gray is showing up on the screen, but um, here it looks like this, okay? So over here, we have X's and dots, so it's not clear what direction the magnetic field points here. Um, we would have to do some math to figure out sort of how far we were away from the wire and stuff like that to figure out whether it points in or out of the page. But in at point B, the wire points into the page, and also the, the loop of current points into the page. So both of these are into the page, so this is into the page. Okay, so um, next is this one here. So this is a doozy of a problem. Um, so we have 
Uh, and the thing that makes it a doozy of a problem is that we have to um, think about this a couple of different ways. So take a minute and read the question, uh, and then we'll come back and see what we got. So since the current is going to the right, we can figure out that looks just like this problem that we just did, which is the current is moving to the right. Okay, so I know that the current is moving to the right has created a magnetic field with dots up here and X's down here. So I'm going to put my dots. I'm going to be a little less careful about the density of the dots, so I can do this a little more quickly. But I've got dots up here and X's down here. That is the only reason that this current carrying wire is in this problem. It's a way to make it harder um, in the sense that, like the question is asking, how will this charge be deflected? Okay, so I come up to this problem, I go right hand rule, okay, V, the charge is moving to the right, so V goes this way, okay? What does that mean for the force that this charge feels, okay? In order to know what force this charge feels, we need to know the characteristics of the magnetic field that are in the vicinity of this charge. Um, so before we did this dots and X's here, I had no idea how I needed to turn my fingers. But now I do know. So I have a positively charged particle, move it to the right, and up here for A, the background, the external magnetic field, points up and out of the page. So I'm going to rotate my hand like this. V is still to the right, but now I can turn my fingers so that they point up and out of the page. And when I do that, my thumb points down. So that moving charged particle will feel a force that points down. Now our negative particle um, is going up. So we'll go V is up. B points out of the page like that, and my thumb points to the right. Um, so a positively charged particle moving up this way would feel a force to the right. But since this is a negative charged particle, we have to flip what we get from the right hand rule, and we say this will feel a force to the left. Uh, next is this one. So V is to the left. So now I want my V to be to the left, and the magnetic field is into the page. So I'm going to rotate my hand like this so that when I curl my fingers, they can point into the page. And now I see that my thumb points down. So a positively charged particle would feel the force that points down, but this is a negatively charged particle, so we'll flip it and get a force that points up. And last but not least, I have V that points up. I want magnetic field to point into the page. So I will turn my hand like this. And now my magnetic field can point into the page. And I'll see that the force points to the left. This is a positive charge particle, so I don't have to do any flipping. And we'll get the negative force. OK. Next is I have a compass placed 18 centimeters due south of a straight vertical um, wire carrying a 48 amp, amp current downward. And we want to know what direction does the compass needle point at that location? Um, and we've been told that, that there's no dip angle. Um, and so we don't have to worry about the fact that Earth's magnetic field oftentimes points down into the ground. This just points due north. So we are here. So I'll draw. Whenever you have a zero degree dip angle, the best way to draw this thing is putting the compass directions in the plane of the page. Okay. Um, with all of this stuff that's going on with magnetism, we have three dimensions. We have northeast, south, and west, but we also have up and down. Uh, and so it's hard to draw all three of those directions in a single plane of paper. So um, a rule that gets me through all of these things is that if the dip angle is zero, then it's usually easiest to visualize drawing northeast, south, and west. 
If the dip angle is not zero, then it gets a lot easier to draw these things. Ignore east and west. East and west will be then in and out of the page. Um, and you can have up, down, and north and south looking like that. So um, a non-zero dip angle, you draw something that looks like that. And that will let you draw a dip angle, which is um, which will let you kind of resolve the way that that looks. Um, okay, so northeast, south, and west is what this is going to look like. And so I have a straight vertical carrying wire carrying a 48 amp current down here. Okay, so if this is my compass and here's a vertical current carrying wire, right, if it's carrying a current downward, that means that the current here is going into the page. Okay, so in my drawing right here, right, I haven't resolved up and down, but if you're looking straight down at a compass and north is to the top of the page, then that must mean that up looks like that and down looks like that. Okay, so I have a 48 amp current that's downward, and since the down direction is the direction that I've drawn is into the page, it looks like that. And we are interested in this location down here, which is 18 centimeters away. We would like to know the total magnetic field down here. So down here, there are two magnetic fields. There is a magnetic field of the Earth, and that points due Earth, due North. So let's draw that in. So that's Earth magnetic field. It points in this direction because this is a direction that I have identified as the northward direction. Okay. Um, but this is not the only magnetic field that exists here because we have this current carrying wire. So we need to figure out how the magnetic field exists down here due to the presence of this current carrying wire. So let's use the right hand rule for that. We don't need to know anything about forces, so there's no reason to use the right-hand rule that has to do with forces. We are interested in the magnetic field created by a current carrying wire. So we're going to put our thumb in the direction of the X, so that'll be into the page, and our fingers curl in the direction of the magnetic field. So what I see is the magnetic field, starting at my knuckles and going to my fingertips, is curving around in a clockwise direction. So magnetic field lines wrap around this current carrying wire in a clockwise fashion like that. So if I make a circle, it goes all the way around a big circle so that it can include this point P down here. And we'll see that the clockwise direction looks like that. Okay, so there's what my magnetic field lines look like. They're going in circles, but down here at this point, they're not going in a circle. We, to imagine what the magnetic field line looks right at this point, we draw this line that is tangent to our circle, uh, and that'll let us tell what direction the magnetic field vector is right at that point. So I'm gonna draw a vector that is gonna go to the left. So that, is the wire. Okay, so um, this problem is a problem of trying to resolve the vector sum of a vector that points to the north and it has a nat magnitude of 0.45 times 10 to the negative fourth teslas plus a vector that points to the left and has a magnitude of something. Um, and what is that something going to be? Well, we need to figure out what the magnitude of a wire is when we are 18 centimeters away from it. So get out your equation sheet and try to figure out which equation that would be. Give it a pause. And when you come back, hopefully you have found an equation that is um, mu naught i over 2 pi r. The magnetic field created to a current carrying wire depends on a constant um, and the magnitude of the current 
that's 48 amps, and R, the distance away the point is from the wire, which is 18 centimeters. So I can plug in all of those numbers, and um, I got um, 5.33 times 10 to the negative fifth Tesla. Um, so there we go. Uh, if you are struggling with this, make sure that you plug in 0.18 for this R. This should just be 48 amps. And you not, you can find looking it up on the table, um, on your equation sheet. It's the permeability constant. So I have this right here is 5.33, 10 to the negative 6. And this vector right here is 0 0.45 times 10 to the negative 4. And the vector sum of them, well, this is an x component of a vector, and this is the y component of a vector, um, will be some sort of vector that points kind of this sort of a way up or to the north and also to the west. Of course, we don't want to write northwest on a problem because we want to make sure that what we have is an actual angle. Um, so I'm going to write this out this way. So I'm going to keep my B wire pointing to the left, but I'm going to um, pick up the earth vector and put it over here. Um, and I'm just doing this for easier visualization so that we can um, see that now these two vectors are adding head to tail. Um, when we have two vectors added head to tail, the resultant vector will start at the beginning of the first and go to the end of the last. So the resultant vector looks something like this. Okay, and we are looking for this angle right here. Um, and this is 0.45 to the negative fourth, and this is 5.33 to the negative sixth. And I want this angle. And actually, if you read this question, um, we're just asked for the direction of the compass. We're not asked for the magnitude. So we could pretty easily calculate the magnitude. We just use Pythagorean's theorem, a squared plus b squared would equal to c squared, uh, and solve for the length of the hypotenuse of that right triangle. Um, but I'm going to instead just solve for the angle here. And to get the angle, I want the angle to be something that depends on the side that is opposite of the angle and the side that is adjacent to the angle. So that to me sounds like tangent. So I'm going to say the tangent of theta is opposite over adjacent, which means that it is 0.45 to the negative fourth divided by 5.33 to the negative sixth. Um, and oh, I have been writing six, but this is a five. So this is not a six, but a five. Five, five, five. And this is a negative five, not a positive five. All right, so to solve for this, to solve for theta, you need to use your inverse tangent button. So this will be that theta is tangent to the negative one. Your calculator will either say tangent to the negative one or arc tangent. Usually it's just whatever you get when you hit second and tangent of 0.45 to the negative fourth divided by 5.33 to the negative fifth. Uh, and when you do that, you will get 40 degrees. Um, and so now we need to be a little careful with how we label this 40 degrees because this 40 degrees, um, this angle here is 40 degrees, but that would mean that this angle here is 50 degrees. Uh, and we want to be careful with how we label this as either being north of west or west of north. Um, and if you take a look at this, I hope you can convince yourself that this is an angle that is north of the west direction. Um, okay, there we go. And we have one more problem to do in here, which is this one. So I want to allow a proton to pass through these two electrodes without being deflected. All right, so if a proton were to be to pass through here, it would feel a force. Let's think back to chapter 16 methods, okay? So I know that the electric field lines always point from positive to negative 
which means that the electric field here points down, right? And if we have a positively charged particle and it enters this electric field, it's gonna feel the force. The direction of that force is also down because a positive charge, when it enters a magnetic, an electric field, will always feel a force that points in the same direction as the electric field lines. And a negative charge will always feel a force that points in the opposite direction. Um, and I think you probably have written that on a note card at some point during the semester. Um, so there is, on this little positively charged particle, as it moves through um, this field, there is an electric force that points down. Okay, um, so if this just went through here, it would go in a little circle and kind of eventually land on the negative electric ele negative plate here. So this question is saying, what kind of magnetic field would let it pass through without being deflected? So that must mean that the question is asking, okay, well, we need a magnetic force to point up that is equal and opposite to this electric force. And if that is true, then there will be no net force on this charged particle, and it can travel in a straight line without um, slowing down or speeding up or turning. So we need to figure out how do we get our thumbs to point up in the right-hand rule, right? Our thumb always goes with the, with the magnetic force. Okay, so um, we have V and F, and we are looking for B. So we're going to use that right-hand rule that um, where your palm is V. So I'm going to put my palm in the direction of V. And just the natural way that I put this on here, V is going this way and F is going up. So everything looks good. And now how do I need to turn my fingers? My fingers need to be this way. So if my fingers point into the page, then my thumb points up. So the correct answer here. Okay, and that is the end of this recitation.